My name is Malachi and I would like to tell you about my great-grandfather, Raymond Randolph Chester, who served in World War II. Raymond Randolph Chester was born on the 8th of the 2nd, 1925, at Point Pierce Mission, Adelaide, the country and land of the Nwanga people. My great-grandfather was raised and grew up in around the area of Port Victoria and Maitland with his family. He liked to travel around the country either by bike or by walking from town to town. He would walk from Point Pierce to Gawa which would have taken him two days or even more to walk with his no with rest and stops. He would also, also travel around to rest like Port Lincoln, Sejuna and Sejuna. He lived in many areas of South Australia like Goa and the railway house at Currency Creek, Logan Street in the Adelaide City. Before the war, he worked as a wharf labourer. To begin with, for World War II, Raymond signed up for the army in June 1942. He lied about his age and said he was born in 1924, when he was actually born in 1925. So he was really only 17 years old. He had a lot of trouble with the army and ended up leaving. The army wrote on his discharge form that he was not suitable for any military service. But my great granddad was going to prove them wrong. In January 1944, Raymond signed up again, but this time for the Air Force. This time he was almost 19 years old. I would like to point out that on his form he had agreed things like saying he was British, but of course he was an Aboriginal Australian. In the Air Force he was a leading aircraftsman, and this is a summary from his service record. He worked as a security guard at the Pierce Royal Australian Air Force Base in Western Australia which is still open now. Mr. Ian Smith from the Aboriginal Vet Veterans South Australia and the RSL has done some more research about Raymond Chester for a book he is writing. Unfortunately I didn't have a chance to meet Ian before the competition due date because of COVID and other stuff. But we are going to follow you up with him soon. I'm also going to tell you more about what life was like for a young Aboriginal man during World War II when I talk about perseverance. After being discharged from the Air Force in 1946, Raymond then worked as a process worker. Raymond also worked at James Hardy, working within the asbestos industry and then retiring after 30 years. My auntie Lynette also let me know about two of Raymond's younger brothers who served in the Korean War, which was not long after World War II. Raymond had his partner named Lowell Charlotte Davy, then both having their seven children together, five daughters and two sons. He was a grandfather to 11 grandchildren. Since his passing, he would have had to this day 14 great 14 great grandchildren and one little great great grandchild after some health complica complications including surviving three strokes and having no, and attending Mariba rehab he sadly passed away peacefully at the age of 73 at the Kiria H on the 15th of the 2nd 1998 with all his family surrounding by him. I hadn't been born yet, so I didn't get a chance to meet him. Now I'd like to say how I think leading 
Leading a Kaufman, Chester connects with the perseverance and makeshift parts of the Anzac spirit. When I was doing my research, I found a lot of things that told us about the racism that Raymond faced. It was actually pretty shocking to see how badly Aboriginal people were treated in the 1940s because it's only 80 years ago. One record we found was something we didn't know about Great Grandad. This warrant from the police gazette says that he ran away from his foster home. This was in 1940 when during World War II was happening and he was 15 years old. They used the word quarter cast to describe him, which we wouldn't use today. We think this means that he was a member of the stolen generations, but this is new information for our family and we are still working it out. Maybe it's why he wanted to sign up for the army on the rage. Another record we found said that Raymond and his family got an unconditional exemption certificate in 1940 when World War II was happening. This was because a new law started in South Australia saying Aboriginal people needed permission to leave the missions like Point, Pierce and Rakan. Raymond might have needed this certificate to have permission to join the army and the air force. It also meant that when the war ended, he, m he might not have had permission to go back and leave that a mission. So you can see there was a lot of racism around during World War II, but Raymond still wanted to sign up to fight for his country twice. To me that's perseverance. My mum's auntie Lynette says that Raymond didn't talk about his time in the war when he was alive, but our family wants to make sure he gets credit for his work defending Australia. Lots of Aboriginal people are in the same boat, trying to learn about their ancestors, so we have shown perseverance too. My mum and I have felt emotions like anger and sadness, as well as pride when doing this research. It only happened after he died, but there are now two war memorials with Raymond's Chester's name on it. I can't really tell you a lot about whether my great granddad displayed mateship during World War II. There just isn't enough information. But I can tell you that indi indigenous veterans have a special kind of mateship. They had to face a lot of racism that other soldiers just wouldn't understand. Aboriginal veteran Uncle Frank was really happy to help with my project. We have never met before, but he shared his personal stories with me to help me understand what Raymond's life might have been like. This year the RSL decided that there would be a special focus on Aboriginal veterans for Anzac Day. It was an honour to represent my great grandfather at the dawn service and speak with servicemen and women like him at the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander War Memorial. I stayed for the march as well. I have felt a kind of mateship with my ancestors this way even though we never met and now I'm interested in joining the Air Force like Raymond did. This year my year 10 history class has been learning about World War 2 and when I mentioned that I thought I had a family member who fought for Australia. My teacher encouraged me to research his story. My research has been a bit different to other students because it is it has been very collaborative, with other people and experts helping me out to pull all the jigsaw pieces together. First, my mum arranged for us to meet with Raymond's daughter, Auntie Lynette, who shared family stories and gave us photos and records. It's really important for Aboriginal people to learn about their stories from their own community this way. 
My teacher helped me find records at the National Archives and Genealogy SA. The service records were hard to understand, so Diana Hunt, who is an Aboriginal woman who has won the Anzac Prize before, helped me go through them. Another really important part of my research was meeting with Aboriginal veterans, SA, who were set up to help families learn more about people like Raymond. We used the book by Auntie Doreen Cartinery, who has done years of research into Aboriginal family hist histories. Uncle Frank, who has loaned me another book, she wrote called Nut and Jerry Anzacs, so I could see how to present a soldier's story. Finally, my friend Monica helped me to make a PowerPoint, and a kid called Frank, no, a kid called Finn from Year 8 helped me with the recording. Everyone has been really supportive to make sure this Anzac Prize entry could be made by an Aboriginal student talking about his own Aboriginal family men member. I am proud of my effort and thank everyone for their support, especially my mum Julie.